Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now we're ready to close out May and we always do that with a classic Q&A. When the old riddle goes up, you drop your questions down below, then I come back with answers. It's hopefully pretty helpful. So we have everything from the new Chase credit card rule, should we be freaking out? We touch on bank account bonuses as well. And then we'll talk about, you know, banks that are less sensitive with 524 rules. So of course, if all that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, of course, I will just be reading the questions from here. Uh, chapters tool will be down below if you want to jump around. But we're batting lead off with Mr. T. Lewis, and he's talking about the chase rule. So he's saying, I'm not understanding why everyone is freaking out about the new chase changes. If you close your card after you receive it, they will claw back the points. Sounds pretty ethical to me. Well, sir, I agree. I talked about this a little bit in the uh, the Sunday recap, so I'll link it down below because I go on like a whole whole thing about it. But the changes he's talking about very quickly are Chase changed some co-branded rules to call out the obvious, if you will, right? So if you close your account within six months for like Hyatt, United, IHG, Marriott, um, they'll claw back your points. They'll go into your account with the, with the partner and take your points, which is not uncommon because we all know here to keep your account open for one year, right? That's the rule. Now, they also had another rule in there that said, basically, it was a chase rule that they applied to all cards. It was basically like, hey, if you are getting these cards just for the promotional pricing, meaning like low APRs and things like that, then, you know, we might not give you another card in the rewards program later. So that one's a little more, potentially a little more concerning. But what I read this as is probably we've had a lot of new people get into the game. Because remember, they advertise airline cards on the plane, right? They'll walk up and down with applications. There are signs everywhere. You know, if you're in a major Delta hub, United hub, whatever, they all do it. And we've seen so many points uh, get so big, points offerings get so big that you probably have a lot of people who think, you know, might not even try to be malicious about it, but like I'm going to get the card, get the points, and they get rid of it because I don't want to be charged in here number two. And they don't really remember how it works, understand how it works, that you're not supposed to close the card. So, you know, a chase could always do this to your point. I think going in and tightening up your terms and conditions just makes it less of a fight because now I can just point to that as chase and say, this is why we did it. And I think the co-branded partners are probably also upset because they don't want to get remember the co-branded partners put up a fight to get their cards out of 524 because they wanted more people but i don't want more people to just leave me after six months a year is you know the the deal that we're making so i don't think that's a big deal at all i think the one to keep our eye on is chase you know and their promotional pricing type deal but again i think it's really just for them to protect themselves so i'm personally not overreacting to it. i'm saying let's just keep an eye on it but uh we'll knock on wood there just in case i'm wrong but i agree with you again full uh sunday recap down below where i go much more detail about uh the changes but i'm with you all right mr k roddy here um he's saying hey a checking account bonus question here i do talk about bonuses more on that later um so here it is is it wise to keep all accounts open for 180 days so that accounts season, regardless of possible clawback early closure fees? Um, you remember seeing that or uh, being told somewhere that it's good practice to leave accounts open for 180 days. So really quick here, what he's talking about is if you go after a checking account bonus, Similar to the credit card rules we just talked about, a lot of them they'll say, hey, you have to leave the account open for 90 days uh, minimum, and then once the bonus pays, then you're free to shut it down, right? Some are longer, you know, some are, you know, six months, whatever it may be. So he's saying, hey, do I wait until the 91st day literally and close it, or do I wait? So that's what we're talking about. The thing we get caught on up on that jams us up later in the game is really check systems, right? So I have a video on check systems, and that's basically Think of it like a credit report just for bank accounts, right? So it's not going to impact you buying a house, getting a credit product, anything like that. It's just like no one really knows about it, but what have they track your, your relationship with banks and deposit accounts. So if you were to have unpaid fees with bank accounts, have delinquent accounts, close a bunch of accounts or open a bunch of accounts, these are the things that get flagged on check systems. And then a lot of smaller regional banks and credit unions will pull check systems and they're like, wow, your check score is terrible. We're not going to give you the account. And so that's really what gets us or gets me at least. That's how I end up getting denied for a lot of bank accounts. Again, I've opened 69 last year. I think I've opened my 25th account this year, yesterday. And that stuff, I believe, stays on your check system report for five years, right? So 
you know, it's not really going to make a difference in my opinion, waiting 90 days or 180 days. It's going to be a closed account if that bank reports the checks and that's kind of what gets hung up. So I personally close mine as soon as I'm allowed to. Now, if it's a bonus that pays out like immediately, like a chime, for example, then I might wait two or three months just to be in good faith and not close it immediately. But accounts like City, as soon as City hits, you know, the bonus pays, I close it down so I can get back in line again. Um, but, you know, it really also depends on how aggressive you're playing. So that is my thought on it. I don't know anything definitive personally. I think just check systems is kind of the thing that gets us. Of course, more info on that down below. Um, Stanley Martin Jr. checking in. Said, what types of multipliers and benefits would you like to see for the new Star Alliance credit card? Do you think the other airline alliances will follow suit? Yeah, so what he's talking about here is that Star Alliance is rumored to be coming out with their own card. So Star Alliance is like an airline conglomerate. Underneath them, they have 26 different airlines, United, Aeroplan, um, Lufthansa, you know, a bunch of other ones, which is interesting because they, every airline has their own card just about. But now the, the mothership's coming out with the card. So I think you go one of two different ways. The way it'll probably happen is it's going to be like a $95 airline car, 2x back at Star Alliance, maybe 2x back on dining, something like that. You know, that'd be pretty boring. But I think you could actually make this the definitive airline card, right? What if you made it like a $450 or $550 annual fee? Give me 3x back in Star Alliance. Give me a check bag for you and your companion. Give me access to every single program's airport lounge, a United Club, whatever Air Canada is. Give me all of those plus priority pass. Because then you, you Star Alliance, you kind of win, right? Like there's the likelihood that everyone's going to fly, bounce back and forth between 26 different airlines is not likely. And then the fact that like even if I offer you every single lounge, the fact that everyone's going to use all of them is also unlikely. But it still sounds like you're getting a lot. And I'm giving you so much flexibility within Star Airlines, Star Alliance, that, you know, why would you go? Why would you consider going to Sky Team or whatever the other ones, right? Do I think other airlines will follow suit? Yeah, probably because there's money to be, there's money on the table, there's money to be had. So yeah, I think they will end up uh, end up doing this as well. But I think it'll be like a ninety-five dollar annual fee card, and it won't be that awesome. Hope I'm wrong though. All right, curmudgeon extraordinaire. I like that name. Um, here we go. What do you think the chances of are of Apple rolling a higher end Apple card with an annual fee? What new benefits would it offer? Uh, free or reduced cost of Apple Care? Maybe discount on Apple TV Plus? The fact that they gave the original card a name tells me something must be in the works. Uh, I think they're going to do it. I think they'll do a business one. I think they'll do a higher tier personal one. So I think you'd make a business card. I still don't think you go high annual fee because I don't think that customer base may be used to paying an annual fee, right? Because it's still the masses. It's not people who watch this every day. So I don't know, $95 to $150 maybe. I think your multipliers are probably the same actually, but what you're going to get is maybe like an Apple umbrella policy for, for Apple Care, right? Because either expedited Apple Care that covered multiple, multiple products that a small business might have. I mean, they'll put a cap on maybe you get 10 MacBooks, 10 iPads, 10 phones, whatever it is for your small business, and you pay like a, a reduced fee and you get expedited um, returns like that. Yeah, I think you throw in a ton of iCloud storage so you can just put everything on the cloud. I'm talking about terabytes worth, or maybe even unlimited, you know, something like that, but a business services plan. And then I think even on the personal side, I think they've got to have a redemption, right? So it's cool that I give you three points back on Apple purchases, but what if I could redeem them back for 1.25 cents? 1.5 might be a bit of Aggressive, but you know they have the partnership with Apple where they allow you to redeem ultimate reward points. So that could be an option potentially. I think you throw in maybe some Apple services there. And I always thought it'd be interesting to do priority ordering if priority pre-orders as well. Like what if you had the card and you were able to pre-order the devices a day earlier so you knew you were going to get yours on launch. Or maybe there's a priority pickup line at the store so you don't have to wait. I think they can go things like that to really appeal to the Apple fan um, per se. But I don't know if they actually wait out outside in line for uh, devices anymore. But that's the way I go. But I definitely think it'll happen. I mean, it's their next path forward is to go into the payment space. But let me know what you think they should do down below. All right, the inevitable. Aside from American Express, what other credit card companies are likely to prove you even if you are over 524? So, yes, American Express will do it. Of course, uh, 524 is Chase's rule. If you've had five or more new credit card accounts from any issuer, they will automatically decline you. U.S. Bank, very sensitive, so not them. I think Citi will do it. City has their own set of rules, but I don't think they're, any, they're specific to how many inquiries you have. Bank of America will do it 
if you have a relationship with them, I have, I'll put up some of the rules on screen. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think if you have a relationship with Bank of America, like you have a checking savings, whatever it is over there, then the amount of cards you can get from them and applications goes up significantly. Problem is, outside of those guys, I don't know who a lot of the cards you want really is. You know, there's, there's such a fall off though. So I think City's good, Bank of America. Um, Capital One can be harder to get into, but I don't know of any rules. Like if you wanted the Venture X, even the Venture has like a sign-up bonus, like 75K right now, but they can be harder to get into later in life. So I would say check out City. You know I'm a fan of the Custom Cash. I actually just picked it up recently. I'll be talking about that later. But those will be your starting ones. If I think of another one, I'll put it on screen. But again, after that, there's such a fall off that it's kind of hard to come up with any one you'd want. Um, all right, two more here. Red Sox Nation, of course. Hey, RJ, did you know that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme? I mean, you know, I, I can see the argument. I think the problem is, like, it, 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 much like a Ponzi scheme, it's not really sustainable. Like, I don't think that... I know you mean these always as jokes, but they mean, but it's not a terrible question. I, I don't think it will ever get Social Security. I'm like 30. I don't think we're going to, like, end up doing it, but we have to keep paying into it because we've promised it to all these people, um, and you can't pull the rug out from people that late in life after we've told them this was going to happen. Uh, so kind of, sort of, I really just think we should be honest about it and say, hey, look, realistically in the country, there's going to be a cutoff after this age. It's just not going to happen and we will start to sunset the social security program. I think now, if you start telling people that early enough, like maybe just from back on me, you make 30 of the cutoff. We say, hey, look, if you were born, I'm 91, so you, you born 1991 or prior to that or sooner than that, you're done. You're not getting it, right? Um, because there's enough ways now, there's enough education out there that if you know that early enough, you can probably start to make your own money and start to plan for that better. But you get people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, you can't do it. So we, yes, we have to keep paying into it so they can get it because we, unfortunately, we kind of owe it to them, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that one. And jumping back in with a quick addition, because we do have a late entry, but we want to get everyone in here. So NS asks, when you already have all the Chase and Amex cards you want, what cards as point program would you suggest moving into next? So of course, you do want to take out Chase first, you know, so we'll assume you're over 524, and then you hit Amex as well. The issue you really run into is there's such a fall off after those guys. So in my opinion, you're really looking to either build out your cashback setup with more 5X cards or you're going bonus hunting. There's not necessarily like another points currency system that, you know, is better than Chase or American Express if you want a, a system. So I like City. Uh, custom cash card. I have one coming in the mail. Finally, City Premier card is really good as well. It, it's kind of hard to keep in year number two because you can get those multipliers elsewhere for no annual fee. It just takes multiple cards. Uh, U.S. Bank. I'm a big fan of U.S. Bank. They're a little bit picky. But Altitude Go, Cash Plus, Triple Cash, um, cards like that. Their points currencies don't really unite or anything, though. Uh, so, again, you're just kind of filling out a setup or going bonus hunting. Discover It could be good. Discover It Cash, you know, another 5% category card. Plus, they have that first-year cash back match. So, it could make a nice catch-all card. And then, you know, Capital One, I think we still have to keep our eyes on them. Venture X right now is probably their best card. But they do have some high-sided bonuses on the Venture from time to time. And then, you know, I'd say keep your eye out on Wells Fargo. We don't know what they're going to do yet. We had rumor on Sunday that they're coming out with basically another version of the Propel card in the name of, it was the Autograph card. So, you know, we'll have to see what they come out with. But those would be my next picks, either rounding out your setup or going uh, bonus hunting because there's just such a fall off once you leave the two major issuers, unfortunately. All right, last one here from Run on the Bank. Hey, RJ, first time, long time. I hear you can make a ton of money from bank account bonuses. Do you know how I could get started? Well, sir, yes, I do. Great profile picture, by the way. It's obviously me writing a question for my other channel. That is the joke. But shameless plug here, kind of what Kay Roddy talked about earlier. I did start another channel dedicated to bank account bonuses. So if you've heard some good stuff here about the bonus information or you want to combine, you know, your credit card earnings with bank account earnings as well, definitely go check that out. I will put a link down below. Uh, you know, on the channel right now, I think we have over like maybe $4,000 up for grabs between all the different bank accounts at all different levels. You know, we have ones for no direct deposit. We have direct deposit. We have ones that you can just sign up. Big, small, you know, I hunt them all. And uh, I think it's great fun and it's a great way to combine, you know, credit card earnings and, and bank accounts as well. 
So definitely go check that out if you're interested and need something to watch over this long weekend. But anyways, guys, that is all the questions you have for me. So I hope I was able to provide some help. Of course, if you want more additional information, feel free to uh, chime in down below and I can add some additional context there. But again, you asked me all your questions already. So I'll just say if you liked it, of course, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And back here on Sundays with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. Go watch the bank account channel, make some money, and I'll talk to you guys very soon in the next one.